Hi there, welcome to Lady Pilgrim, where I like to share about practical godliness and my walk with the Lord. Welcome back. If you have not seen part one, I highly uh, recommend watching that first. Um, I will link it um, in one of these corners here. And, um, and then when you're done watching that, you can come back here. Because <laughs> um, this is a continuation of that video. So, last time we were talking about uh, the verse Psalm 46.10, where it says, um, Be still and know that I am God. Um, I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. And we went just more in detail, or in depth, with the term, you know, being still and knowing that who God is. So, what we gathered was, the being still is literally meaning to be weak, to be fable, to be faint, to sink down, to relax. So, there's no... God does not um, want you to feel like you're too weak or too... Um, frail or whatever it is to be in his presence he wants you to come as you are and that knowing is a very intimate type of, no of, of knowledge so we will be continuing on this and there's a quote from the book Des The Desire of Ages um, page 363 paragraph 3 it is this is one of my favorite books um, it really goes into a lot of detail and just really focuses on the life of Christ and if you read this you'll fall more and more in love with him and yeah it, it's hard not to <laughs> I can say that much I definitely cried when I read um, some of these chapters so um, also if you prefer doing audio um, I can link below a um, link to the audiobook um so yeah without further ado let's continue <laughs> so this um paragraph says in all who are under the training of god is to be revealed a life that is not in harmony with the world its customs or its practices and everyone needs to have a personal experience in obtaining a knowledge of the will of God. We must individually hear him speaking to the heart. When every other voice is hushed and in quietness we wait before him, the silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God. Sometimes that can be pleasant and sometimes not because we see our faults, um, but then sometimes we are encouraged by what we hear. He continues saying, he bids us, be still and know that I am God. Here alone can true rest be found. And this is the effectual preparation for all who labor for God. Amid the hurrying throng and the strain of life's intense activities, the soul that is thus refreshed will be surrounded with an atmosphere of light and peace. The life will breathe out fragrance and will reveal a divine power that will reach men's hearts. So this time with God and quietness with him, resting in his presence is vital for anyone who desires to serve God. Um, so here, there's other verses that I wanted to share um, in relation to our weakness and our feebleness. Um, so the first one is Isaiah 40 verse 29 to 31. It says, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. 
But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that mount up with wings as eagles. Oh, sorry. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And also the same chapter. I'm just a few verses before that. Um, oh, these ones show who God is. So this one. Um, yeah. So that, what I just read. <coughs> Excuse me. What I just read shows our, our weakness, our feebleness, and then these verses that I'm going to read show who God is. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who has created these things, that bringeth out their host by number? He calleth them all by names, and by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, o Jacob, and speakest so, Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. So that was Isaiah 40, um, 26-28, and also 29-31. And even Jesus talked about um, how important it is to know who God is and having that quiet hour of communion with God, your own heart and you know, nature in your own heart. Jesus did this, otherwise he would not have been able to be sinless. Like he, it would have been impossible for him to do what he came on this earth to do unless he had that time with his father in heaven. That's why he got up early and, you know, before the day really started. Um, so also, let's see. Jesus said this in John 17, verse three, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. This was a prayer that he was praying um, before he was going to be crucified. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how long before, but he was praying to God. And he was praying for us. He was praying for the believers. And this, like, for him to say that this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent, I think should be highly considered by us and uh, know and ask God how we can know him better. Isaiah 30 verse 15 also touches on this subject. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and you would not. So that was King James, and in ESV, I believe, I have here. Yes. So, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning, or repentance, or your return, return, and rest, shall you be saved. In quietness and in confidence, or trust shall be your strength and you would not so our strength is to be in our confidence in god and in our returning and in our repentance there's no strength that we can truly receive from god unless we give him permission um he because he he doesn't force himself on us he won't impose you know he wants to give us his spirit. He wants to give us his peace. He wants to give us strength, um, whether it's mental or physical. But he wants to give us so much more than we actually ask for. In Isaiah 32, verse 17, um, sorry if I'm pausing a lot. I think I was in cutting this video in half. Um, just so it wasn't going to be too long. I think I kind of lost my momentum. And I'm not used to doing this. 
so please bear with me. Um, I hope it's not too distracting. Um, I just wanted to add that. Um, let's continue. <laughs> Isaiah 32, verse 17 also says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of... Uh, I'm going to slow down. <laughs> and the work of righteousness shall be peace. So it's promised that the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Um, it also... We could also use the words... Um, for peace, it could be the work of righteous, righteousness shall be completeness, safety, health, contentment, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, or to be quiet, or to be at peace, or to be undisturbed, or to be re at repose, at ease, um, to be at rest, or to give, or to take rest to settle, to be still. Um, so this is very much related to Psalm 46 verse 10. And also, Psalm 119, 165 says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Hebrew In Hebrew, the word offend also um, means stumbling block, um, or an occasion, or a means to stumble. So basically, we can also say, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall be a stumbling block to them. So, like, just this short study here reveals to me again, <laughs> and hopefully to you, that there is peace to be found in Christ. And if we don't have that peace, that means something's missing from our part. Like, we're not prioritizing our time with him how can he give us that peace unless we do that which we know will do that so I uh, highly recommend you doing your own study and you know continuing on this or starting from scratch yourself I'm on, on the subject and on these verses but I'm really thankful that I have this study and that God brought to mind um, that, I, that I have it so I could share with you guys because I needed the reminder and I'm sure some of you needed it too because that's often how it works. You know, there's no coincidences with God. So I, I really hope and pray that you were blessed and um, whatever thoughts that you may have, um, in regards to this subject or something that you didn't think of before on um, this study, um, you can leave it in the comments. I would love to see it. Um, I really like having interaction with you guys. It's really special. Um, so thanks for stopping by and I hope and pray that your day is blessed.